In this demonstration, we're going to implement a basic router configuration between two Nexus 7000 devices. We're going to configure a routed link between these devices on port E4-46 and E4-48. Let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is that we mentioned E4-46. That's a little bit different than what we've talked about before. We've always said E1-10 or E1-15. The reason for this is that the Nexus 7000 has multiple module slots in which you can plug line cards. So if we do a show module, we can see that we've got several line cards plugged in, one of which is in slot 4. We're going to use that line card for our router configuration. So just to review, all E4-46 means is that I'm going to configure port 46 in module 4. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is go to the global configuration mode by typing configure terminal. Now that I'm in my global configuration mode, I can go into my individual interface by typing interface E or Ethernet 4 slash 46. I'm now underneath that individual interface. Now as I mentioned before, the modules that plug into a Nexus have the capability of being either a switch port or layer 2 port or a routed port which is a layer 3 port. If I want it to be a switch port, I type in the command switch port. If I want it to be a routed port, I type in the command no switch port. And in this case, I do want my port to be a routed port. In order to finish making this a routed port, I need to assign an IP address to the switch port. So I'll do that by simply stating IP address. If I type a question mark here, you're going to see that it's asking me for an address in the normal IP version 4 address. I can do two things here. I can type in the address and leave it at that and move on to the subnet mask, which I could type like this. But I have a much faster option, which is to simply put a slash after the IP address and tell it what the mask I want to use is. In this case, it's a slash 24. If I press enter here, I'm done configuring my IP address. One thing to note is, if I left it the way it is right now, my port would be down. Because on the Nexus 7000, by default, the ports are down, versus on the Nexus 5000, the ports are up. You can change that in the setup like we covered in the previous lesson, but right now all my ports are still down by default. So in order to enable this port, I have to say no shutdown. Now if I do a show interface brief, I can see that port Ethernet 4 slash 46 is up and it's in a routed port state. You can also see that this port is running at a 1 gig connection. So now my routed connection is up and running, and I should be able to see things if I run show IP route. There we go. I can see that I have a connectivity to the network 192.168.0.0/24 and it's directly connected over interface Ethernet 4 slash 46. As you can see in my show IP route, I already have a default route configured. You can see it by the 0.0.0, .0 slash 0 going to the address 10.91.31.1. That is my default route. If I wanted to configure a different default route, I would simply go to configure terminal and type in a new route. I do that by typing in IP route 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. I could continue 
by typing in a network mask here of 0.0.0.0, or I can just put a slash 0 here. Next, I want to make sure that I type in my next hop address. This next hop can either be an interface or an address. In this case, I'm going to type in an address of 10.91.31.1. Once I've done that, my default route is now entered. If I want to add in a second IP route statement to specify a different network, I would add in IP route the network that I want to send information to. The subnet mask and the next hop. And now I've statically entered in a route into my routing table. There are two more basic commands that I want to go through before we end this lesson. The first one is the ping command. Now, you've probably used ping in the past, and on the Nexus it's a little bit different. So I want to ping 192.168.0.2. What I can do here is I can actually specify a source. Source. And then specify the IP address of that source that I want to bind to, which is 192.168.0.1. So now it will use that specific port to run the ping from. As you can see, my ping was successful. The second command that I want to show you is a command called show IP interface. Show IP interface will show just that, my active IP interfaces. As you can see, I can see my 192.168.0.1 interface is up and responding to requests. This is a great command to use while troubleshooting. Please join me for our next lesson, Configuring RIP version 2.